You know, after I got that 980 Ti, I thought my bad luck was over, but here's yet another 900 series gigabyte card that's, uh, well, this one is probably easier to fix than the 980 Ti, but it's another case of me going, why? Why is it in this state? So this is a GTX 960 Windforce. Uh, this uses the same PCB as the G1 Gaming, so the G1 Gaming just gets a better heatsink, but it's the exact same PCB. Which is good, because this is a six-phase VRM, um, so this one's probably not gonna blow up. Though I know of one card that did blow up. Anyway, I got this for 10 euros. I saw GTX 9 960, uh, good PCB, 10 euros, and I was just like, well, for 10 euros like that, I, I, I can get a kebab for that. Because for some reason they cost that much now. Um, so like, 10 euros, like, because the thing didn't even have, like it only had a picture from the front and said 960 not working. And I was just like, well, for 10 euros I'm willing to take the risk. And the risk I took and I lost. Um, so it's probably not very obvious at first glance, but the back of this graphics card is royally um, effed up. Like, this thing has gone through a grinder. So, let's just zoom in a little bit. I think now you can see the problem. So, not just are we missing numerous components, there's gashes in the PCB here that may have cut a layer deep. There's more gashes here that might have cut those traces. This is where the BIOS chips would usually be. This is where dual NPN transistor to select which BIOS chip is active would usually be. And uh, yeah. So <laughs> the problem with this card is immense physical damage. So I suspect this card like fell down something or something fell on it. Like, like something went like this and then sheared off components, scratched the PCB, sheared off components here. So, yeah. Like, I'm not as mad as the 980 Ti because this one was literally, like, super cheap. Like, yeah. But, so the thing is, this card's probably repairable. The main issue is this, the dual NPN transistor. Because the pads of this thing are completely gone. Like, completely gone. There's like one little bit pad left, and the other pads are just gone. And here we are at the same point again as with the 980 Ti. I will have to do trace and pad repair. And that's something I've never done. I don't think my equipment does work for this, because this is just way smaller than anything else. So I don't think I can I, I can even do this if I tried. So there might be some way how I can... F like, I, I, I have a schematic for this card. So I can uh, go around a little bit. Because as far as I know, this dual NPN transistor is responsible for choosing which BIOS chip is active. Because this card, for some reason, has dual BIOS. There isn't a dual BIOS switch on this or anything, but it does have two BIOS chips. And as far as I know, this dual NPN transistor is responsible for switching which one is active. Um, so, the thing is, I have several dead cards that I could pull BIOS chips off of. I have the CH31 something, like the external BIOS flash, I think. I also have an EVC which can also flash BIOS chips. Like, I could just pull a BIOS chip off of a def dead card, flash this card's BIOS onto it, solder the chip on, and then, like, the thing is, I don't need the dual BIOS thing. I only need one BIOS chip to work. And what I could possibly do is like find out how this is hooked up with the schematic. And then just kind of, instead of having this transistor, just kind of short whatever I need to be shorted to have like the BIOS chip that I put on be active. Um, and then the card could possibly work again. Because any of this damage, like this damage looks really severe. Um, the good thing is, there's basically no resistors in this area. There's some resistors, actually. There's one resistor right here, which is the one thing in this area that got spared by it. And that's like the the only resistor in this area that exists. 
Like there's some other debug resistors that would have been here, but you can see those pads don't look like, like there was nothing on these pads. These were empty. Um, and then there's like two resistors here, one here, and that's like everything else behind the core is capacitors. So I just need to put capacitors on it. Like the card would probably work without this. Like it will at least turn on and display an image without these capacitors back on the card. Now there is potentially an issue with like that that the, the cuts might be deep enough to cut traces or like cut traces in this area. Now, actually traces like this I can probably repair, but traces like this uh, are very very hard. Um, but traces like that probably easier to repair because these are bigger and they are just going straight. Um, so yeah. But yeah, so the missing capacitors in this area are not actually that big of a deal. Like the card might be unstable without them but it should be able to just turn on because right now, well, there's no BIOS chip, so the thing just doesn't run. Funnily enough, it does get detected in Windows if you have it as a secondary card, and it is actually correctly identified as a GTX 960. The only thing that doesn't work is reading the sub-vendor because it just reads undefined instead of gigabyte because no BIOS chip. Um, also, Windows says that this device is functioning properly, which is really funny because it literally doesn't have a BIOS chip, it literally does not put out an image. So, yeah, I, I guess Windows sees the GPU, which is still working fine, and then goes, oh, it must be working, but, like, the GPU doesn't know how, what to do with because there's no BIOS. Um, but, yeah, so, like, the VRMs on this work fine. Like, uh, let's take the card apart. Um, but, yeah, so, like, VRM-wise, the card works, which also potentially means, yeah, this could also become an e-power if I end up not fixing it. I really wanted a 960. Like, 960s like, are 28 nanometer, Maxwell, um, and the smaller 28 nanometer dies, like the smaller Na Maxwell dies, are supposed to have great voltage scaling. They don't run very hot, um, so this is just all around a very fun card. Uh, yeah, so as an extra VRM heatsink, which I always like. I, I prefer having like a dedicated VRM heatsink over having it be part of the air cooler because then when you run it on water cooling, you don't need to find an alternative solution for your memory uh, VRM cooling. But yeah, so this is uh, like gigabytes take on like a higher end 960 PCB. So like you get a second six pin, you get a six phase V core. You stay at a one-phase VMEM, but honestly, this has only four mem. Like, this is a 128-bit bus. This only has four chips, two on the front, two on the back. Like, you really don't need more than one phase for that. Uh, this also has these display switches again, because you have uh, this display switching feature. You can either you can choose between having this or these two ports. Um, so, yeah, that's something that Gigabyte... Like, actually, they still do that on my 2080 Ti. Uh, but, yeah. And then the PAX rail should be this thing. And then that might be 1.8 volts or something else. There's another chip right here. Um, that's probably the control. No, that is, no, wait, that's the INA3221. That's probably the controller for memory. Then what that is, I don't know, might be gate drive. Like I haven't really probed the PCB cause like I know all the VRMs work. The problem is that it doesn't have a BIOS chip. So, um, I'm not immediately giving up on this card because um, I might be able to just, like, go around having to repair this pad because I, I, I don't need the dual BIOS thing. Um, like, I just need one BIOS chip that works and then just, like, somehow I need to tell the card that this one BIOS chip that's actually on the card is active and not the other one and that transistor is responsible for that. And if I... Like, I don't know if there's just a default chip that's active. That would be really cool because then I could just put the chip on and it would just work. But I think I need to tell the card which chip is active. Um, and if I can figure out how to do that, uh, the card's probably repairable. Like, if I get the BIOS... Like, if I think get this thing to boot, like, with a BIOS chip, then it's probably fixable because at that point I only need to, like, fix this carnage around here. Which, again, like, the card is probably working even without having it fixed. It probably just, like... Like, you're gonna lose a lot of stability with, like, this many missing capacitors. But the card should work. Um, it might even install drivers and either on desktop, just, like, under load. It probably is not very stable. 
But yeah, um, yeah. So here's another graphics card I got uh, for repair that turned out to be something else. Like this also has a fuse on the PCIe. Like every time I buy a gigabyte card, I just hope that this thing is burnt, and I just have to replace this and then some other component that short circuited, because that's a super easy repair. Like every time you have a fuse, super easy repair. Um, so, yeah, every time I buy a Gigabyte card, I just kind of hope that this thing is broken and uh, something else is shorted and I just need to replace those two and that, that's it. Um, but yeah, so this thing, I don't know, something fell on it or it fell down onto something and now it's dead. Um, if I can't repair this card, well, I'll make this into an e-power and this is using Samsung 4 Gigabit C die which is the same memory chip that the dead 980 Ti Strix I have uses. So I could use these chips on that card. I think these are lower speed bins, so it might not be ideal, but the card should like work without them, uh, like with these chips, just at maybe slightly lower memory clock. But you know, like Samsung chips are pretty good at overclocking, even if these are our lower speed bin, they probably do at least 980 Ti stock speeds. So I'm not actually too worried about that. But like, if I can't uh, repair the card, I'm making an e-power and I'm using the chips to repair the Strix 980 Ti, if, if I can, that because that one also potentially has uh, dead, like ripped off traces under the memory. If I'm lucky, those are just ground or VMAM traces, but if they're data traces, then rip that card as well. Just like the Gigabyte card. But yeah. So here's another project that I'm gonna have now. Like, this is gonna be a long-term... Well... Uh, well, first I need to figure out how the BIOS select selection thing works. Then I need to salvage a BIOS chip, flash it, put it on. Like, the main thing is finding out how the BIOS selection thing works. Once I have that figured out, and then if the card then works, then th this is an easy fix. Otherwise... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. So... <laughs> Uh, harder repair than I hoped, um, but I, I guess I'm fine with it because this card was super cheap and it does look like I can repair it, unlike the 980 Ti where it's just like, oh yeah, like the, the memory system's just foobard, like, better, like, you would have better luck just transplanting the core onto a different PCB. <laughs> um, yeah, so, thank you for watching. Hope you learned something, and until next time, goodbye.